Hello, everyone. We're learning the Haftorah of this week's uh, Torah reading. This week's Torah reading is um, Toldot. Toldot is talking about Jacob and Asa, the sons of uh, Yitzchak. <clears throat> and this is the Haftorah. Interesting enough, I think it was the Romans, they, for some reason, decided to forbid the Jews to read from the five books of Moses. So what the Jews did is, I guess they must have read the five books of Moses in their house, and but they they read the, the parts from the prophets and the other writings that were something similar to that week's Torah portion. So at least they wouldn't uh, forget to read something from the Torah. And also there would be part of the, they wouldn't forget that in the, in the prayers of Shabbat as uh there's the reading of the Torah. So they put that in. In any case, when the Romans uh, ended this decree, which whenever that was, I don't exactly know, but when they ended this decree, as uh, nevertheless, the, the Jews kept uh, this this uh, custom of reading from the Haftorah. They read, so it would be, so to speak, to add on, always adding on in Judaism. <laughs> so it is. <clears throat> this is, um, uh, first of all, it's talking about the, the Jews uh, in the second temple. Malachi, Malachi was a prophet. He was the last of the, what we call, official prophets. Even though there was still prophecy in Judaism, it says that the Baal Shem Tov was prophet. We can see that the Lubavitcher Rebbe was definitely a prophet. He said amazing prophecies. But he wasn't a prophet in the sense that his prophecy was written down. I mean, even in the time of the prophets, when uh, Isaiah and all those, uh, Ezekiel, Yechezkel. So there were thousands, tens of thousands of prophets. There were the Bnei Anavim. Says we remember we learned that said that um, the prophet Ovadia, he hid away like a hundred prophets, fifty in each cave. Who were these prophets that he hid away? You know, and then Jezebel, Ezebel, she killed like thousands of prophets. You know, so the prophecy. Is was given to a lot of people and it still is, but the official prophets is Malachi was officially the last one, and this was already in the second temple. <clears throat> this is the beginning of the second temple. It was in the time of uh, you know, Ezra when they came back. Okay, so the Malachi, like all the other prophets, have the same basic message, and that is that the Jews are making God mad, and the Jews are not taking heed of what they're doing. And that the Jews are a rebellious people, terrible people, but God loves them. And God loves them uncon unconditionally. And it makes difference, no big difference what you did, what you're doing, or what you do. God always loves you, and he'll never cast you away. But that makes it even worse, because you're giving pain to God himself, which that doesn't make any sense. But nevertheless, that's the way it is. That's why the prophets came. The prophets were representatives of God to tell the people what God is thinking and saying and complaining about. They were just saying, that's what the word prophet, Nev, Nevua, is from Nev, just like pouring out. The messages of God just came through them. So they were saying what God wanted to say to the Jewish people. They, they said it through people. <laughs> Which that's no novelty, because that's basically the whole Torah, except for the first two commandments that the Jews heard directly from God on Mount Sinai. I am God, don't worship any other gods which for some reason all these other, you know, the other religions have forgotten those two that the Jews heard directly. I'm God that took you out of Egypt. Don't worship any other gods. And all the rest was the prophecy of Moses. But everybody knew that Moses was only saying what God wanted. So here it is. Malachi is chastising the Jews, really letting them have it, telling them how bad they are, how stupid they are, how inconsiderate they are, how insensitive they are. And you know, trying to get the Jews to get their act together, which, of course, they didn't, you know, in the end. And the second temple was also destroyed. But it was destroyed, uh, you know, like 300 years, whatever, even more. The second temple stood for 410 years. And Malachi was just in the beginning of it. So it stood for several hundred years after this prophecy. So here we go. Ready? Now, always we have, it's always like 90%, not all the prophecies, the, the prophecies of Isaiah, like after the 60th chapter, are all good. 
And God's talking about how he's going to forgive the Jews and gather them all together with Mashiach and bring the temple, etc. But all the others are like 90% chastisement, maybe 10% even less, uh, you know, positive <clears throat> messages. Okay. Masa, masa means a prophecy. The prophecy of the word of God to the Jewish people through Malachi, through the prophet Malachi. Malachi. Ahavti Yeshem, I loved you, says God. Vamartem, and you said, Bamahavtanu, how do you see, how can we see that you loved us? Hello, Ach, Esav. So God says, isn't that so that Esav was a twin brother to Yaakov? That's what's connected to this week's Torah portion. Esav is a twin brother to Yaakov, no Mashem. Lo Evet Yaakov, and I loved Jacob. As Esav, Senesian, Esav, I hated. Vasim et harav shemama, and I will destroy his mountains, ves nachalato, and his, uh, and his, uh, his portion to tanut midbar, like the a barren desert. Just see if this is, no, like, like desert serpents. Maybe that's it, and it's here in this way. And I'll give it over to the desert serpents, I guess all the scorpions and everything, they will be and the uh, rule over there. But key uh, Tomar Adom, because Edom, Edom is also another um, a name for Esav. Esav was called Adom. Right in the beginning of this week's Torah portion, it says Esav is Adom. Esav, Ki Tomar Rushashna, we have been made poor. See, when Nebuchadnezzar came along, this is in the first temple. Here he's speaking in the beginning of the second temple. The first temple, Nebuchadnezzar, he destroyed the whole world. So it says all the non-Jews, Jewish nations, Gentile nations, says that he's destroyed us also. But don't worry, we're going to come back and we're going to build our our ruins. God says, God Shem Tzavot, all of those nations that Sanchir and and I'm sorry that Nebuchadnezzar destroyed, they are all of them became enemies of the Jews. They all sort of took turns making trouble for the Jews. So God said, you're going to rebuild. Hema, you knew these people, they can rebuild Bani Aros, and I'll destroy them. V'korolehem gavul rishah, and I will call them, one minute, and I will call them uh, the boundary of wickedness. Ba'am and the people Asher Zam Hashem Adalam, and the people that God has cursed forever. I mean, you look around, you don't see any Babylonians walking around, any Chaldeans or all these other nations. They just don't even exist anymore. And the Jews are the same. And your eyes will see. God is saying to the Jews through Malachi, your eyes will see. And you'll say, Yigdal Hashem, God has made himself great. Israel, Because of the from the, how do you say, the boundaries of Israel. Right? From, from, it was from within the boundaries of Israel, you will say that God is great. God will bring you all back to Israel, and the whole world will see how God is great. Ben Yechabedav, then a son will honor his father, Ebed, I don't know, and a servant will uh, honor or fear his master. <clears throat> right? But God is saying, you're calling me your father. I'm your father. Ava Rachman. Then why don't you give me any honor? If I am your master, I am Mora. Where is your fear for the master? Why don't you do what I say? Omar Hashem Tzavot. Tzavot is another name of God also. You have Kohanim. You, your Kohanim. Now is God speaking to the priests. It says, you priest, you have defiled my name. Famartem, you said, Bama Bazinu how have we defiled your name, God? Megishim el Mizbachi Lechem Megoel. You have brought on my altar a foul bread. Vamartem said, Ma Megalukha. And you said, What's wrong with that? Well, how have how have we how have we defiled you? Vamarchem Shulchan Hashem Nivza, because you have said the table of God is how do you say? Disgusting. Lord, let's see how he translates it here. One minute. You have said. Eh, 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 eh. 
is repulsive. The table of God is repulsive. Okay, now what's going on over here? How can the priest say a thing like that? The way I understand it is like this. I mean, just let's think about this for one moment. What is this idea of God wants a temple and that we have to bring offerings to this temple? I mean, isn't that sort of you know childish in a way? I mean, well, come on, that, that's what God really wants. He wants us to bring you know, bread, he, he's God's hungry or something, what he wants to bring in bread. So, so what I'm saying right now is exactly what those Kohanim said. <clears throat> and they're saying, you know, let's go, you know, God is infinite, he's above the heavens, he's above the earth, he's above everything. And that, that he needs these kind of, okay, you know, if he wants these sacrifices, so it's a sign, maybe he's not so great. So in any case, you know, we don't have to. So what they're, they're, they're missing, the whole point is, is that God, because he's infinite, so Anything he says, no matter what it is, it's infinite. And you just do what God says because you want to connect to your creator. You know, you want, to, you owe it to him. He's creating you. You owe it to God to do what he wants. And not only that, by doing what God wants in this world, you bring a blessing into the world. What difference does it make? It's almost like a person going to a doctor and the doctor, you know, he's, he's really sick. And the doctor says, I'm going to give you a shot. And you say to the doctor, tell me, doctor, are you nuts? I feel bad enough as it is. What are you sticking a needle into my arm for? Not only that, my arm doesn't hurt. My head hurts. My stomach hurts. Right? What do the doctors say? Listen, you don't understand what's, what's going on. You came to me. I'm a doctor. You believe what I'm saying? Okay, you don't believe what I'm saying? Then do whatever you want. Right? Do whatever. The same thing with God. God is saying, you fellows are working in the holy temple. Come on. You, you, you're doing what I want you to do. Because they say, nah, it's a job, you know. I mean, everybody has to have some sort of a job, you know. We try it out for... You know, for the tennis team, they didn't let us on. So, we'll, you know, so it, it means that what does it mean? He's, he's saying, listen, I'm not going to leave the Jewish people. I love the Jewish people. They're my people. They're my sons. They're my everything. But you're you're overstepping the boundaries. You know, you're 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 misusing your um <clears throat> your rights, uh, your your connections. Magishima mizbachi, you bring the key, the key, tagishun iver. And he's like, you bring blind animals to the altar. Ain't rather, there's nothing wrong with that. If you bring a crippled animal, the chula or a sick animal, ain't rather, that's not bad. Bring one of these things to a governor, an important person. You think that it'll be, he'll accept it? It'll be like a, a bribe, right? Here I'm giving you, you know, you want to get in good with the mayor of the city. So you bring them an old blind dog. Here, here's a present. You know, now we're friends. I said, what are you talking about? Get out of here. We, it's the same thing. What do you, this is what you bring to God. Hashem Tzavos. now, chalu now, penekel. And now you have disgraced the face. I'm chalu, I'm sorry. No, no. And now, shalom. Chalu, now, you, now you're entreating me. You're begging from me. Now you are begging for me. And you say, you know, please forgive us. You are the ones that did this bad thing. You want me now to be your friend. Right? What are you saying? Forgive the Jewish people here. We're bringing these sacrifices. You're the ones that are messing it up, you Kohanim. You're the doing you're doing the problem. You're the problem. You you expect really that you're going to be the, 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 the what is it? To intercede for the Jewish people when in fact. You're the ones that are the big problem. Omar Hashem says, God, but me, Gam Bachem, he's going to tell it should be that maybe somebody will just close the doors of the temple, the low Te'iru Mizbeachinam, so that you won't light, uh, offer up offerings on the sacrifices for no reason. That's right, okay. So that's right. So you won't, Te'iru, make a fire on my side uh, for nothing. And it's, it's better. Not to do anything than to do the wrong thing. There's obviously a law in Judaism that, as far as a mezuzah goes, it's better not to have a mezuzah on your door at all than to have a not kosher mezuzah. Because if you have a kosher mezuzah, you think, well, maybe I'm doing something. But and your fact is you're not. And not only that, you're making blessings for no reason. You know, taking God's name in vain. But if you have no mezuzah at all, at least you'll feel bad. I don't have a mezuzah. Same thing here. It should be, you, what are you offering up these offerings for? And you're doing it with a totally the wrong attitude. God is saying to the Kohanim, 
Better you shouldn't offer him up. I don't want your offerings, says God. And your bread offerings I don't want. Because from the end of the world, earth, and others from the furthest east point until the, the, the whole wherever the sun, sun is, right? Wherever the sun shines, the non-Jews, they know that I exist. True, they're worshiping idols, but they think that the idols are the only way to get to me. They are they, they are aware that there is a king of the universe, but they just think the only way to get through it is by worshiping a stone or a plant or a person or something. But people all over the world are making sacrifices to me. And when they bring, they bring pure bread offerings. Because my name is uh, honored by the non-Jews, says, says Hashem Tzavos. I'll never forget. I mean, this is not a good example, but I'll... Me and my friend, I had a friend, and uh, we were like, I don't know, 14, 15 years ago, we decided we, we wanted to buy beer. Huh? Wanted to buy beer. We didn't know what beer was. We never got drunk. We know, but we figured we'll drink, you know, we'll li live on the, how do you say, on, on the wild side. So we went... And, so we we went to um, I think we forged past fa forged ideas. We went, but so and we went outside so that nobody would recognize. We went outside of the area where we lived. We lived in this area that was mostly Jewish. We, nobody was religious, but it was Jewish. So we went out. We went. So we went to a store, a small grocery store, and the guy looked at the ID, and okay, you know it says, uh, and he said. Uh, to me, and it is, you boys are Jewish, aren't you? So, you know, we'd never really encountered anti-Semitism or anything like that before. So we said, yeah, yes, we're Jewish. He said, but you Jews, you don't drink. Jews, you don't drink. You know what? So suddenly we realize, you know, everybody knows Jews are like sort of, I mean, the fact is Jews do drink, but they don't make a big deal out of it. They don't go home and take a shot. You know, there are individual Jews that do, but it's not a big thing by Jews to go down to the bar. Right, you go down to the bar. He says, "You just all of a sudden we realize, you know, people understand that the Jews are. <clears throat> how do you say they have some sort of a uh, higher moral standard? At least that's the way it was back then. Maybe it's to totally different now, but nevertheless, the non-Jews, everyone, they recognize that there definitely is God, and they know that there is God. But atem, that's the non-Jews. But atem, but you Jews, mechalimoto, and you, you disgrace my name." Belmar, when you said Shulchan Hashem Migalu, and you say that the table of God, the holy temple, is no big deal. Venivu venivze achlu, and you're eating right these disgusting low things. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Well, Martin, and you say Hine Mitla. By the way, you they came in late. You, those who came in late. Why are we reading? This is the Haftorah of this week. The Jews are going to be reading this in synagogue after the reading of the Torah. And you said, Hine, Matla'a Vahapachtem Oto. And you say, This thing, matla, it's, it, this is so burdensome to me. And you, and, and, uh, and you're really, I say, Pachtem Oto, you're, you're really putting me into a bad situation, said God. Omar says God. You're bringing stolen things. The Piseach and blind and sick. And you're bringing at the Mincha and you bring together with bread offerings. You think that I'm going to really accept this from you? Arur Nochel. Cursed is the uh, what is it? The, the, a charlatan, he says, a charlatan. A nochel, that's right. a charlatan is a nochel. The yesh bedro, what, what's, a, what's a charlatan? Uh, he's got in his flock a zachar, a big healthy animal. The noder of a zaver mashcha. And he, he brings to the temple sick and uh, weak animals. Ladoni, to God. Because I am a great God, says God. My name is great among the Non Jews, a little bit more we have. Uh, okay, so let me just stress this again, which is I think a very important. 
I mean, God really cares what type of an animal you bring. Uh, come on, you, could, you have a bigger, God knows, hey, you got a bigger sheep in your flock. What are you bringing me, bringing me a little sheep for when you have a big sheep? I mean, really, God cares about sheep. That's all God cares about. The, but he's got all the animals in the world. What does he get? The thing is, is what he cares about is your service. It doesn't make any difference if God says, you know, I want you to bring, you know, marbles or, or bring, you know, your old shoes. But it makes no difference. If God is saying you, for you to do something, then for whatever God's reason it is, it's important. It's important for the whole welfare of the world and the harmony of the universe that you should do what God wants. I mean, you really, you think you can understand God? You you understand how I, how an eyeball is made, right? All the doctors in the world, they can't figure out how is the eyes correspond with the tongue, with the feelings, with the this. So you say it's survival, it's a survival of it. You can say what you want to, but the fact is, it's a tremendous mystery. And so you can't, when it comes to the temple, all of a sudden, no, this is not a mystery. This I understand. <clears throat> right? So when you bring uh, an offering to God, you give him the best. It's not that he wants for himself. He wants it for you. And if you don't listen to me, and you don't take it to your heart, to give any honor to my name, says God, I will send to you a punishment. Uh, disease. And I will, excuse me one second. Yes. And I will curse your, oh, I will, I will turn the blessings into a curse. And I've already done it. Because you don't take it to heart. I am, how do you say, warning you. I am warning you. Uh, no, here, go, 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 here means different. It says, behold, look, here's the, have a look, says God. I am suppressing the seed that's, that you plant. Go, here also means to shout, but the Zarisi perish al penechem, and the opposite, I will spread. Uh, how do you call it? <clears throat> the, uh, perish. Perish really means like the, the waste, the, the vomit, the the feces on your face. Perish from the meals that you eat in your holidays. The nasa etchem a love, and you will you'll the, the, to show you'll be carrying your sin around with you. Then you'll know ki shalachti alechem that I have given to you. At the mitzvah of this commandment. These commandments are not coming just because it's, you know, the, how do you say, the um, uh, the customs of the Jewish people or our, our uh, heritage or something like that. This is coming directly from God on creating. I'm telling you to do these commandments. You should at least give a little bit of honor. What am I expecting from you? I mean, God could say, listen, wh where'd you get your legs from? Where you got them from me? What if I said, I want a commandment that you have to cut off one of your legs? Huh? One you legs when you when you're 15, cut off one leg. Then when you're 19, cut off the other leg. If God if God would have said that, then He has every right to say something like that. It, it belongs to Him, but He doesn't say that. What does He say? All He wants is just to bring these sacrifices to the temple and bring them. Why He wants that? Who knows? That's what He desires. Liot Briti, you should know that I have a, a special covenant with the Levites. Says God, those are the those are the priests. Omar Hashem, Briti Hayato My covenant was with them at the Chayim at the Shalom. Life and peace I will give, I gave to him. Atenlo. Mora vir aeni. Have fear and honor me. Excuse me one minute. Yes. For the sake of the fear which he feared me, me, because of my name. Nichetu. He had fear. In other words, he gave honor to my name. He was respectful. Torah emet ha a teaching of truth was in his mouth. Va'ola va'avla, and any falsehood, lo nimtzav was not in his lips. Excuse me, just one moment. I just want to see where this ends. It ends here.
Yes, 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 yes. Okay, but that's a true, and my true emissary. He never lies. Beshalom over Mishar Holachiti. With peace and with justice, he goes with me. For Rabim and many people, Heshiv Mi Avon, he returned many people from sin. And was he worried about the others? If he saw anyone was making a mistake, as he would go and try to correct him. And that's the way you should be, says God. So that's the difference between Yaakov and Esav. Esav did whatever he wanted to, and Yaakov did whatever God wants. And you Jewish people are, for some unexplainable reason, following the path of Esav. Don't do it. <clears throat> I love you, says God. Right? Signing off with love, God. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now, see you tomorrow, God willing, at 8.15.